So as our final topic in this unit on limitations of algorithmic power, we look at the challenges of numerical algorithms. So by a numerical algorithm, we mean an algorithm that computes some values that are of interest in continuous mathematics or conventional mathematics. For instance, when we solve equations to get roots of equations or when we, uh, for instance, take uh, inverter matrix or things like these, which are actually computational problems uh, in classical mathematics, which involves some numerical computations. So now what are the problems that can arise with such computations? So the first difficulty that we face is that when we are doing such computations, we are typically iteratively computing finite approximations of what are infinite calculations or infinite objects. So for instance, when we integrate something, we are actually looking at the area under a curve and in principle, we are trying to compute uh, very minutely small rectangles. So this is an infinite, infinite calculation in order to get to the actual area, but we want to approximate it by some larger objects. Or if we have an infinite series for a value, then we might want to compute the value of the series up to some finite point but we will only get an approximate answer. So we have these finite approximations or infinite objects, and these give rise to what are called truncation errors. That is, we stop approximating at some point, and so what we have is not the actual value. So how much different is the value that we have computed from the actual value? The other class of errors that we encounter when we are doing numerical algorithms are round off errors. And this arises from the fact that we cannot actually write down real numbers or even rational numbers precisely. So we need to have a bounded representation. And in this bounded representation, the numbers which we actually represent in the computations are only approximations of the numbers that are being used. And so at every point in our computation, the answers that we get are slightly away from what they should be because we can't represent the real answers. So let's look at the first class of problems, those that arise because of finite approximations of infinite values. So suppose we want to compute the value e to the power x. Now, one way to compute this is to use the so-called Taylor's expansion. And this says that e to the power x is the same as 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial plus x cubed by 3 factorial and so on. So you have an infinite series of the form x to the n by n factorial. And in the limit, this infinite series actually gives us a value of e to the x. Now, the point that we would normally do when computing this effectively is we will stop for a fixed n. Right? So we will uh, take this uh, particular series and we will not go on forever, but rather we would basically say, okay, let's stop here. So now the question is, if I only compute the first n terms or n plus one terms of the series, how far away am I from the real answer e to the x? Right? So this is the truncation error, the difference between the actual value e to the x and the value e to the x up to n terms. So another example arises if we want to compute something like a definite integral. So if we want to compute the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Okay? So this is uh, essentially the area under this curve between the values x equal to a and x equal to b. So we want to really estimate this area here. Okay, and now one way to do this in an approximate way is to first slice up this into equal length blocks, right? And then in some sense, draw an approximation in terms of trapeziums, right? So what you can do is you can go midway between these blocks and you can draw a trapezium like this, then a trapezium like this, trapezium like this, like this, and like this, and then you add up the areas of these trapezoids, and then you get an approximation of the area. So this is what is called the trapezoidal rule. So now the question is, if I take the area of these uh, trapezoids, which are drawn by this approximation of this curve, how different is it from the real integral? So let's say we want to compute the truncation error for that e to the x. So we have e to the x, the real value, and we have the Taylor's expansion for some n terms. So for instance, we could have 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial up to x to the n by n factorial. So we want to know what is the difference between these two, right? So now actually, in some cases, like in this one, mathematicians have actually calculated 
an estimate for this and what they have computed is that this is always less than or equal to m upon n plus 1 factorial times the absolute value of x raised to n plus 1. And the question is what is m? So m is actually the maximum value of e to the y for all y ranging between 0 and x. Right? So if you can compute the maximum value or an estimate for the maximum value of e to the y between 0 and x, so of course you don't know e to the x. Remember you're trying to compute e to the x. So you want an upper bound for the value between 0 and x. You plug it in and you'll get an upper bound for this error up to n terms. How would we use this estimate in a useful way? So what we really want to know, remember, is when can we stop? When can we afford to stop computing e to the x? What is a good value of n to stop it? So supposing our target is to compute e to the 0.5, that is the square root of e, and we want an error which is less than or equal to 10 to the minus 4. Okay. So the first thing is we have to get a good estimate for m. So what we want to know, know is what is a good value for this m, okay, which is now going to be the max value between, say, 0 and 0 0.5 of e to the y. Well, we can always argue that e to the y is going to be increasing. So this is certainly going to be less than or equal to e to the 0 0.5 itself. That is, the maximum value is actually going to be when y is 0 0.5. Now, we don't know this, but we can sort of estimate. So e is somewhere between 2 and 3, right? So the square root of e is going to be less than the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So this is going to be strictly less than 2. So this is a very crude estimate that we can have for m. Right? Now what you do is you plug this back into the earlier equation. Right? So now you have this equation and you want to check what happens when you have m divided by n plus 1 factorial into absolute value of x raised to n plus 1. Right? So now you have an estimate for m. So you know that because this is strictly less than Okay, so you could put 2 for m right? and now you don't know n but you know what x is, x is 0 0.5 because that's the value you're trying to get, right, raised to n plus 1. So now this is something that you want to compute and you want this to be less than the desired error. So it's difficult to compute exactly what n plus 1 should be, but it seems reasonable to assume that the error will decrease as you compute more terms. So you try n equal to 1, n equal to 2, and so on, and it turns out that at n equal to 5, this is okay, right? So this equa equality is satisfied when equal to 5. So that means that if you do uh, e to the x up to n equal to 5, then you will actually be able to compute e to the 0 0.5 with an error less than equal to 10 to the minus 4. So in a similar way, we can write a formula which estimates the error for the trapezoidal. So remember what a trapezoidal rule said. It says that you have some kind of a curve, right? And you want to find the integral between some a and some b, right? And it said you must divide it up into suitably thin trapezoids. And the question really is how thin should the trapezoid be? So you will now get some error estimate which is in terms of the number of trapezoids that you divide it and you can use a similar kind of argument so if you want to estimate the integral within a given uh, accuracy it tells you how many trapezoids you should put between a and b 